Hi, and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a car that the customer complaint is they're driving along, and when they go over a, a bumpy road, they hear like a knocking noise in the front of the car. Specifically on the left side is where they hear the noise from, so uh, we're going to lift it up. I'm going to show you how to diagnose what the problem is, and then how to go about doing the repair, whatever it may be. Um, so let's lift it up, let's pull the wheels off, and uh, let's get started. Okay, now obviously when these cars get older, there is a significant amount of, of issues that can be causing a rattling noise. This is the first thing you want to check. You want to check your strut to make sure it's not leaking right there, which it's not. So, I mean, obviously it's an old strut, but it is not leaking. Um, stabilizer links look like they're fairly new, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um, we're going to check underneath here too where the uh, stabilizer bar connects up to the body of the car itself, which is right, I know it's a tough spot to see. You know what, let's get a better light. Okay, you see right inside there, this spot right here, Right there is where the uh, bar sometimes gets a little bit of play in it. In this particular case, it doesn't look like it, but let's just give it a little shake just to make sure. It's nice and tight, so let me grab a pry bar and we'll continue with that. Okay, so if you put the pry bar inside here and you just move up and down on it, you'll see if there's a significant amount of play in there, which you can see is really not. We are going to check the back over here. These bushings in the back, because sometimes these bushings in the back here go bad too. They're worn, but they're not making any kind of noise right now. They look pretty decent. It's not banging into anything else. Next thing we're going to check is we're going to check this sway bar link right here. Even though it's new, you never know. All right, put your hand on it and you move it up and down. I'm going to move the camera just a slight bit. Okay right inside here. You see that movement inside there? I don't know if you can see it. Let's get the light over so you can see a little better. I hope you can see that. This right here, watch that movement inside there when I pry down on this. See that movement in there? In the joint right here? That is no good. If you have just that little bit of movement inside there, it's going to be amplified a hundred times over with the weight of the vehicle on it. So uh, I'm sure there was probably just a poor quality uh, link that was put on there. So that link is definitely no good. All right, now before we conclusively decide that it's just the link that's the problem, we are going to check the ball joints just to make sure that the ball joints are in good condition too. So let's get over here and take a look at the ball joints. Now that is obviously your ball joint. And you can see that the boot is not ripped. The boot looks like it's in good condition. We just get in here with a pry bar. We pry it very lightly. And there really is no movement in here whatsoever. Um, I'm going to say that the, uh, the bushings and everything else in here look like they're pretty decent. You can see they look pretty decent. Uh, we know that the, um, that the sway bar link is actually an issue. So let's call the customer. We're going to recommend replacing the sway bar links, and um, and then we're going to uh, we're going to find out if they want me to do the job, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll take care of it. So we'll come right back. All right, let's get the price on the parts, and we'll uh, we'll call the customer.
Hey Dave, how you doing, Jim? Hey, um, I got a Toyota Corolla 2000. Can I get a price and availability on the uh, the front sway ball links, please? Yeah, give me a price on the Moog and also the cheap ones. Okay, do you stock them? Okay, all right, I'll call you right back. Let me just talk to the customer. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Um, well, the, the, the Moog are really not that much more money than the cheaper ones, so we are going to call up the customer. We're going to make a recommendation to go with the better ones. Uh, depends on what they uh, what they want to do. So, uh, all right, let me give them a call and we'll see what they want to do. Hey, Janice, how you doing? It's Jim. Janice. Hey, uh, I got the car inside. Take a look at it. Uh, the oil change is done. Obviously, no problem with that. Everything went smooth with that. Um, that, no, that noise that you're getting in the front, it's the stabilizer, the stabilizer link. The links are no good. They got to be changed. Now, did you put them on there or was it, or because uh, they look like they were recently replaced. Okay. All right, well, maybe, okay, well, maybe it's just been on for a while and they just look clean. Okay. All right. There's two different ways you can go. One, we can go with the aftermarket, uh, the, the, the less expensive, or we can go with the better stuff, the Moog. Um, it's, it's a much better product. What I like about the Moog is that they have grease fittings on it. You can lubricate them whenever you uh, do an oil change, and that way you're not going to wind up uh, having to change them again in the future. Well, if it was my car, I would go with the Moog. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. I'm going to uh, call up, get uh, get the parts sent down to me, and we're going to get started. All right. I'll call you back as soon as I wrap it up. Thank you. Bye. All right. Good choice. She decided to go with the Moog. Um, doesn't even care what it costs. She said, if I do it on my own car, they'll take care of it on this one too. So, uh, all right. Um, let's uh, let me order the parts up, and we're going to get out there and we're going to get started on it. Okay, all right, so we are going to replace these here. We're going to take these nuts off here. Now, it seems like a simple job. The problem is that when you, uh, when you try to take these nuts off, you do not want to strip them out. If you strip them, you're going to have a problem with trying to get these things uh, off of, the, off of the, uh, uh, the car itself. Uh, you'll have to get in here with a, with a cutting tool and cut it. So we are going to spray some penetrating oil on here. just so we can uh, get in here and, and get this out without any kind of difficulties. Um, looking at this now, it looks like somebody already cut through down here. You see that little line right there? It looks like somebody got in here with a, with a cutter and cut into this thing already. So, all right, we're gonna be real careful with that then. All right, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get on here with the wrench and we're gonna try to, to separate them. It looks like it's about a 14 millimeter, so, um, I am going to try to, uh, to get in here with an air gun if I can. Oh, I'm wrong, it's 15 millimeter. I am going to try to get in here with an air gun to try to loosen these up. Uh, I don't think they're going to come out, but you never know. Okay, let's see what happens. Now, I just want to tell you this. Um, whenever I... Whenever I change links, I always change them in sets, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, cover your ears. Okay, well, as you can see, it did not come out, but it did spin loose, so that's a good thing. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to get in there with a, uh, uh, with a, um, a 15 millimeter socket, and uh, Oh, sorry about that. I got distracted. I heard somebody outside. All right, we're going to get in here first. We're going to get in here with a uh, with a 15 millimeter wrench, just to hold it like this. And then we're going to get a Torx, and then we're going to get in there with a Torx, and we're going to hold the uh, we're going to hold the center shaft on here from spinning. Oh, pretty good guess. Now let's see what that is. That's a uh, 
a five millimeter. So what we're gonna do now is, you're gonna hold the center with the Torx. You're not gonna use the Torx to actually rotate the, um, the, uh, shaft, the shaft out. You're actually gonna turn the wrench and you're just gonna hold the center with that Torx. Because if you try to turn the Torx, you're gonna strip it out. So we're just gonna work it real slow back and forth like this. You're holding the center and rotating the nut. Make sure you use plenty of penetrating oil. If you see it starting to strip, stop and, and spray it up again or put some grease on it or some anti-seize or never seize or whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I'm trying to work around the camera, which is a little bit of a pain in the, in the you-know-where. So basically you're just holding the center shaft with that five millimeter Torx and you're rotating the nut off. Make sure that this, make sure that this five millimeter is perfectly straight. Because if it twists a little bit sideways, you're gonna wind up having to, uh, to cut the uh, end off of here. All right, so this one we have off. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on this bottom one over here. We're just gonna hold it in place and we're gonna rotate the wrench. So let's do that. Make sure your Torx goes in all the way. If by chance it does strip out, and it does happen, don't freak out. It's not a big deal. It's a lot more work for you, but it can be done. So let me get this off of here, and I'll explain to you then what you're going to have to do. That's why it's very important to take your time, spray everything up with penetrating oil before you wind up stripping it out. See there. Okay, now we're loose. So let's take our wrench off and let's take our five millimeter out of here. And we're going to take that nut off right here. Now, if by chance this thing's stripped out, what you'll need to do is to get in here with a uh, with the hacksaw, and you'll need to cut this off right here. This way, you cut the nut off, and you, you can take the nut off. But it's a pain in the pain in the rear end doing it that way. But if you have to, you do. You'll have to get in there with a hacksaw. Now, remember, I thought that somebody had cut down in there. It's actually they didn't cut it. That's actually part of the casting right there. All right, so now, after we have this disconnected on this side here, we're gonna take this, pull it out like that, and then we're gonna take this, and we'll pull this one. Now, it's a little bit tight, as you can see, but we'll pull this one out too, and uh, now we'll get our replacement. And I'm gonna take the other side apart, but I'm not gonna bore you with that. So I'm gonna go do the other side, get my replacement, and once I have it, we'll come back and we'll finish this job off. Okay, now remember we talked about the, uh, the off-brand versus the, the uh, quality Moog stuff. Um, as you can see, this one is Moog, and I'm going to show you why I like the Moog over the, uh, over the standard aftermarket type um, links. A couple of reasons. One, this is the aftermarket. This is the Moog aftermarket, obviously both aftermarket. But you see how this one has grease fittings in it? You can grease this so this joint will never go bad again. This one, as you can see, has no grease fittings. So that's why this one wore out again. Um, but these have the, uh, the fittings in it. Another thing that I like about the Moog is, and I'll show you this, when you, uh, 
When you try to take off these, you know you have that little five millimeter to, um, Allen or Torx or whatever you want to call it inside there. As you can see, this one does not. This one, you actually, when you put it back on and you take it off, you take a wrench, you put a wrench behind it like that, and you hold it while you air gun this down or tighten it down with a pair of ply, uh, uh, with a, uh, a socket and a, and a uh, ratchet. All right, so uh, let's get over there. I'm going to put this in a car, and uh, we're going to get this job wrapped up and out the door. Okay, come on in. This is the uh, a location where it was. You remember we took it out of there. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put back in the replacement. Now, it's a good idea to do both of these at the same time, left and right side. So I do have the other side apart, and I have it partially back together. Uh, I'm going to put this in here like this. Now, sometimes you have to play around a little bit to get it to fit in there because you're real close to the axle. But we're going to get the top one in first, and then we'll we'll work with the uh, with the bottom. All right, I'm going to catch the nut on here like this. And we're going to catch this nut like that. And I'll get in there with our wrench and we're going to hold it. And we'll tighten it at the same time with the air gun. Now, you're probably going to want to cover your ears because it's going to be a little bit noisy. So uh, I'll tell you when I'm going to do it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get in here with the, uh, with the wrench. And we're going to hold this. Now you want to hold it someplace where you can obviously get the wrench off. At, you know, once you tighten it in, um, it may be a good idea to use a thin wall wrench if you have it. If you don't, that's okay. We're just going to turn it until it can get on here with a wrench, like that. Nice and tight. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on this one. We're going to have to turn it a little bit until we get our wrench on it like that. Cover your ears. Nice and tight. And that's it. Now we're going to go around to the other side. We're going to repeat the same procedure on the other side. And then we'll be all set. Now, remember, once you have this on here, you need to get in here with the grease gun and grease it here and here, and that's it. You'll be all set. So um, remember that play we had in there before? You see now? No play whatsoever. Up or down. So I'm confident that that's going to take care of the noise. All right? Sound like somebody was shooting at us, huh? That's actually my pry bar just fell onto the ground, so nothing to worry about. Okay, all right, so that's it, we're all set. Um, make sure you put the grease in there. If you don't put the grease in, you're gonna definitely have a problem. So um, that's it, we'll take it out, we'll road test it, make sure the job is done, and it's out the door, and this lady will be very happy with a nice quiet car. All right, as always, if you have any questions or comments, you want to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.